Good evening. Welcome to Two Local Radio. On Strip Club Choppers Radio. And on Two Local Radio. Yep. Um, I am Ray Ray. And I'm Chrissy D. And uh, people wonder what happened last night. Well, I was just fucking dead tired. And so was I. We didn't really sleep good the night before, so, you know, one of those nights. Exactly, and as much as you'd like to always do what you want to do, it doesn't always work out that way. Wouldn't have been a very good show anyways, I think, if we were both tired. Because we both probably would have fell asleep in the middle of the show. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good. No, I don't think it would be very interesting. All you'd hear is... I don't think you want to hear that, do you? All right, first I want to get this out of the way. Not, you know, to me this is most important. Because while we do our show and everything and whatnot, you know, the artist matters more than we do. Okay. Most definitely. So tomorrow night, for all those in Knoxville looking for something to do, check out Brad Austin. He will be at Market Square in the Arts Fair at 6 p.m. Then check them out at 8 p.m. at the Preservation Pub. We may show up. We may not. We originally were going to go. Uh, we're not sure if we have the right finances to go right at this point. And what's on the schedule. Exactly. So, all right. Once again, check out Brad Austin at Market Square at the Arts Fair at 6 p.m. And then at the Preservation Pub at 8 p.m. What we're going to do is we're going to play uh, this cool uh, commercial. You're going to laugh your ass off. And then we're going to play a song by Brad Austin. And then we're going to start the show. Sounds All good. All right. So here we go. This is called An Enigma. Interesting. I, James Bond, fell into an assassination plot involving a naive Russian beauty in order to retrieve a Soviet encryption device that was stolen by Spectre. I managed to beat the bad guys, but with those who use an enigma, I cannot break through their security encryption. It looked so simple. No passwords, symbols, or that other rubbish, but an enigma outsmarted me. I will now concentrate on playing golf. So, for those of you who want top security. Visit anonigma.co.uk All right, well that was the commercial. Very interesting commercial. And uh, before we get to the Brad Austin uh, song, we are letting people know that we do have ads posted all over um, because we're trying to make some money. You know, to keep a business afloat, you got to try to make some money. Right. So if we do shout outs or play, uh, you know, different songs for people that we're not interviewing or we may end up interviewing these bands or yep. read a poem or something, it's probably due to, you know, we got paid for it. However, we're not going to, you know, change our show it in any way, shape or form. No, we're not. And we're not selling out. We're just trying to make an honest living. That's right. But on that note, people are like, shut the fuck up already. Let's hear that song. This is Brad Austin, who will be once again tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at Market Square Arts Fair. And at 8 p.m. at the Preservation Pub in Knoxville. They're both in Knoxville. He's a phenomenal artist. Let's check him out. Okay, sounds good. To let you know something Cause all these feelings They've been bubbling Underneath the surface I, I really had no choice I guess So I caught you there Wrapped in moonlight And the innocence You wear so well Taking pictures With my eyes burned To my memory Filed away 
the things I don't want to forget Cause you don't know me that well I'm sure you're doubting the details You said it's never worked in love with friends before well, what if I was different? I was different So now we've got a situation With details bigger than ourselves And hearts that want to run and hide in reservation I guess I never expected anything else But you don't know me that well I'm sure you're doubting the deal You said it's never worked in love with friends before well, What if I was different? Oh, what if I was different? I want to meet you somewhere in between All right, well that was Brad Austin, Something Different. And we're going to play one more song of his by the end of the night. Oh, yeah. That was definitely a good song. So be sure to check him out in Knoxville. If you don't know where by now, well, then there's something wrong with you. <laughs> no, really. Go check him out. Um, we've already went and we've already met with him once. And he's a real nice guy. And he's played some great music. Yeah, we were just sitting back, just relaxing. And he said, hey, you must be too loco. <laughs> <laughs> he walked right up to us. It was really cool. Yeah, well, because we don't like to take the spotlight all the time. No, we so. don't. We don't. We don't say nothing. We just sit back and we're quiet. So you know, it was cool that he came to us. He made us feel good, you know. Um, there is a a bunch of bands that we will be interviewing soon. Um, I could go through the list, but it's a pretty long list. Yeah, you'll just have to listen and see. And we're gonna play some new music tonight. Tell them who the new music is, honey. Uh, the new music is uh, by a band called Omega Down. Yep. They're a band, a metal band out of Knoxville. Oh, okay. And then we're going to play some Absalon as well. They're a metal band out of Orlando, Florida. Oh. And then we're going to, you know, play some other shit as well. And we're going to play, uh, you know. He doesn't mean bride, other shit, peep, everybody. He means other music. They know what the fuck I mean by now. Watch what the fuck you say, man. Don't say fuck. Fuck. You just told me don't say fuck, and then... Fucking don't say fuck, man. All right, but this show is called One Big Cluster Fuck. Because in life, sometimes, it's just a big cluster fuck. Yeah, you start to do something one way, and something fucks you up, and you don't end up being able to do it. Or you end up having to do it a different way. Yeah, and everything takes time. But but the thing is, while you're waiting, while you're playing the waiting game, you ever get tired of playing the fucking waiting game? You're like off to it like a great start, and then you're like, "Come on already!" Yeah, exactly. Can we pick up? You know, hurry up and pick up a little, please. <laughs> yeah, e- exactly. But but then again, that's when you're a perfectionist like me, and you want more, and you want to do even better. Yeah, mo- most people be like, okay. Between the two outlets, and you got over 10,225, probably like close to, you know, 11,000 plays in a month and a half. And he wants more. And I want more. Me too. You know, keep them plays going. I want the whole state of Tennessee. Yeah, I I agree. I want the whole south. I want the whole north. I want the, I want it all. Yep. The um, whole West Coast, wherever we can get. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the reason I want it more is because the more that we're broadcast and the more that you tell your friends and family about us, the you know more money we can make ultimately. Exactly. But, but it's not about us making money like we're trying to get rich off this. It's about us making money so we can build, so we can actually have a, rather than just a studio, so we can do it inside of a building. Yeah, so we can have the bands actually come in and perform at a place. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's that's the way it is, you know. We want to be able to have more, not just for ourselves, but so we can offer more to the people that are coming to, to play music for us or 
comedians or whatever that come in to do a show for us, you know, we can offer them a little more. Exactly. And in in turn, it makes the audience, you know, have more. Exactly. Because they want more. They have every right to want more. And then the more, you know what, the bigger the uh, we grow, the more shows we can do. Where we can have somebody, we can hire people to do shows 24 hours a day, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. But the point is, just in life, sometimes it's like, okay, yeah, you're doing well, but... Uh, not as good as we want to be doing. You know, it's not just us. It's just well, I mean, general. us as far as us in general, all of us. You know, people in life, they just want more. I mean, it's like... Isn't the American dream to have more? Yeah. Not to be selfish, but to have more. Because we were told when we were young that, you know, if you work hard, you can get anything that you want. That's what we were told. And it seems like if you come from, no disrespect to anybody that comes here. But if it seems like if you come here and you get everything. And if you're born here, you get shit on. Basically, that's how it goes, unfortunately. So, I mean, it, it, it's just fucking crazy. I know. It is crazy. I mean, what the fuck, you know? It, it, it's just... We were promised when we were young, you know, this is the land of opportunity. This is the land of the free... You tell me what the fuck is free. If they could find a way to fucking tax us for breathing, they would tax us. Exactly. You know, but um, the thing is, it, it, it's not just, you know, the powers to be and whatnot. It's just in general. It's like the values have just fucking left somewhere. It seems like people don't have family values and all the other values that we had growing up, you know? I didn't have shit growing up. Yeah, um, no, I meant as far as values, you know? Knowing morally what's right and what's I wrong. I know what the fuck you meant. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I am sure. I don't know. You didn't look like you knew. The point I'm trying to make is a lot of us grew up in dysfunctional homes. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, I grew up, I really didn't know my biological father. You know, he died when I was 18 and... What's fucked up is the same, uh, you know, the same time when he, I didn't find out he died years later. Yeah. But it was the same time that my stepfather, you know, I went over, a lot of people don't know this story and I'm going to tell it. <laughs> um, you know, I was kicked out of the house at 16 years old. Yeah, he's a crumb ball. You know, um, I, I lived on the streets for a little bit. Uh, I had to deal with a lot of different shit, and you just had that mic perfectly, and you just changed it for no fucking apparent. That's a woman for <laughs> you. Well, I'm not going to put my two cents in on what I think about his stepfather because it's not very nice. Oh, he was he was a asshole, asshole. basically. Asshole to me. Let me tell you something. I went over to this man's house and met him. I had my fist balled up in a in a fist. In my pocket, I was waiting for him to say something smart. I was going to pop him one right in the oh, mouth. Oh, stop it. For all the crap he pulled. Oh, yeah. I don't like him. But, I mean, the point being is uh, that, you know, I went, all I did on my 18th birthday was went over there just to, you know, because I had tremendous respect for myself because he raised me. Whether yeah. I liked it or not, whether I liked his rules or whatnot, he was, you know, he did raise me. Yeah. Of course, he treated my brother like he was fucking gold and me like I'm dog shit once my brother came in the picture. Yeah. And if my brother is listening, that's the true fucking story. I have nothing to say about him either. But, um, you know, he's trying to do his own thing. And that's, I ain't you know. got nothing to say about him. But, <laughs> you know, on my 18th birthday, all I wanted was a fucking happy birthday. All I fucking received... Was a get the fuck out of my house. You're no longer my son. I'd rather have a street bomb as a son. Yeah, some guy, huh? Well, I mean, I Are understand you why I hate the guy. Yeah, uh, that's I why. I understand the reason behind it. Hey, dude, if you're listening, karma's a bitch, and that's why you're having problems with your hearing. Stop just saying. It. Stop it. But I'm just saying. Chrissy D is a <laughs> evil person sometimes oh yeah when you mess with my husband oh yeah but that's why that's not my father-in-law my father-in-law is pops 
Okay, the greatest but, man in the world. But, but that's not that's not the fucking point. <laughs> I know. Uh, I just wanted to bring up Pops because I love him. The point is the way that I felt. I felt like the man that you know helped raise me. You, you know, gave me a little more respect. Should have had respect to the adult, but because cops were at his house and because I was wanted by it the law, it doesn't matter. I, I was you treated like a fucking criminal. I was treated like I was a low life, like I was fucking a piece of shit. You know what? You're no different than any other kid. Let me tell you something about stepfathers, okay? I had a stepfather. My stepfather was a lawyer. And let me tell you something. He had cops at his door many a times because either my first my older brother got in trouble and then my younger brother got in trouble. And he never once disowned my older brother and called him a piece of shit or... That's basically what he called you in so many words without saying it. And didn't say to my brother, well, I'd rather have a street bum for a, for a son. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to be That's honest, a real stepfather. Uh, to be honest with you, my aunt and my uncle. Are your pa- are your, basically your mom and dad. I, I don't know. I don't want to disrespect my mom. No, like no that. disrespect to your mom. We love your mom, too. And her boyfriend's f- absolutely f- fantastic. You have, you have what's called a... You have... Two dads, well, three counting your biological, of course. We can't disrespect him either. But, you know, your mother and her boyfriend, of course. And then mom and pops. So when is mom and and mom, uh, mom and mom again two dads? I'd, I'd love to know what this happened. No, no. Did they have a sex change or something? <laughs> no, I said mom's boyfriend. Your biological dad and pops. And then mom and pops as your mom and mom, and mom as your mother's. You like did. you have your biological mother and your aunt. You can tell your mother. You can tell me that's what you Pops meant to say, but that's not what you said. Your um mother's boyfriend as your father's. This is recorded right now, and that's not what you said. Shut the fuck up, will you? All right. So anyway, but you don't realize people don't realize how much that fucking hurts. Of course, it you does. know to have the guy you know that rate or partially raised you. Mm-hmm. Um. More like badgered me my whole fucking childhood. Yeah. But regardless, you know, the one that you look up to say, you know, you're nothing but a piece of shit, basically. That's pretty rude to say. And I understand why. I wasn't the best in school and whatnot. And I graduated through a correspondence. But then I went on to computer school. I graduated in computer school. You know what? No, that's a dropout. That's a crock of shit. Because let me tell you something. Whether our son graduates from a correspondence school... Or he goes to high school and finishes high school. You would never stand in front of him and call him a piece of shit. No, and you I would... You would never treat him like that. So, no. You know what? Your stepfather's a piece of shit. And if he's listening, I hope he is. Him and your brother are both pieces of shit in uh, my eyes. That's wonderful. That because you know what? You wouldn't say that to our son. But that's not the... Because you're a real stepfather. Uh, well, I just try. That's I know, all. but I, I like to give my husband props because he is a good man. All right, so so anyway, how many fucking times you got to say husband? Okay, my asshole. <laughs> okay, you're my asshole now. No, but I'm just saying, people know by now, it's like you say every fucking shit is like, I duh. Know. My hubby, my honey. All right, so anyway. You know, that really fucking got under my skin. It really, you know, hurt me deep inside and just made me filled with anger, to be honest with you. Because when I originally came out to Tennessee, mm-hmm. I was filled with anger. Right. I was pissed off at the world, pissed off at my, you know, my stepfather mm-hmm. for saying I was a piece of shit. You know, I just went through fucking court. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but I, I'm, you know, I, I was looking at 45 fucking years for no reason. Wow. For something I was not involved in other than telling other people, hey, don't do this shit. Right. Well, my name got caught out and, you know, it was what it was. They switched judges on me. They fucking, they tried to throw the book at me. If you don't believe in God when you almost get 45 years and then you, you know, catch a break. Even though I had to stand up for myself. Right. Because my own lawyer was trying to screw me. How many people out there that raise your hand if you've ever went to court and your own lawyer was trying to screw you? I bet you a bunch of people that are, you know, are listening to the show or will be listening to this show will say, hey, that's me. My lawyer tried to hey, screw me. Hey, I know me. how that is. Yeah, they'll be like, I know how that is. Yeah, gee. 
I'm sure a lot of people can uh, understand how When that you is. have a judge that says, okay, I'm going to help you out, and then your own lawyer says, no, we want to see what money people are out of. Mm-hmm. It, it just makes you think that, what the fuck? Why is this guy here? I'm like, dude, get the fuck out. <laughs> You're fired right now, you know? I said hit the bricks. You're fired, motherfucker. Are you... Peace out, and I would flip through the birds. But yeah, I mean, so I I just went through that, and when I went, you know, to Tennessee, I could not get a traffic ticket, or they were going to bring up the fucking case again. Oh, brother! I had three years. I had to be a fucking angel. Oh boy, I bet. No, I was an angel. I almost lost it a bunch of times, but I'm glad I came, originally came out here to you know Tennessee because coming down south. It really changed me in the way of fucking, I learned how to laugh and I learned how to not be so hateful and just enjoy myself. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I've I've calmed down a lot since I've come down to Tennessee. I think I've become a lot nicer than I was and yeah, I'm a lot getting nicer. nicer, you know, the longer I'm here. So, you know, it's doing me a lot of good. I mean, I love Tennessee anyways. It's a beautiful state. But Notice how I was saying something and how it changed it. And she, it has to be about her. A typical fucking woman. <laughs> hey, that's why I'm Chrissy D. Yeah, you know, so notice how the, the fucking mics are the way you had them before. Well, you make up your. All right. Anyway. <laughs> but the crazy thing is when you come from a dysfunctional family, I want to know how many people, you know, come from a dysfunctional family. You know, uh, you can get a hold of me, you know, on Facebook, Bones, Space Ray. You know, tell me there. Email, you can reach uh, 2 loco at att.net. You can uh, leave a voicemail or give me a call up, 865-268-5773. You know, or whatever. But here, here's the deal. How many people could not find love in their own families? So they had to go to people on the streets that people call bad influences, like drug dealers and fucking, you know, just kids that get in trouble and whatnot. And the kids that got in trouble and the drug dealers and all that were actually well, ones that fucking straight my ass out. Right. I, I had and a dysfunctional me home because my, I didn't feel my mother gave two shits about me, but I went to other people who were better influences. Like, I hung around with a um, kid whose father was a child psychologist. And um, I think they were a very big influence on on my life, you know, growing up. And a lot of other people that I hung around with in the neighborhood were all good kids. So, I was, I mean, I, but I grew up in a different neighborhood than you did. So, that's you, why. You know, one thing that helped me out, which is, I don't even know if they have it anymore. But when I was a kid, there was a thing called Alateen. It's right. for people who have family members that drink or you recovering recovering alcoholics or narcotics <laughs> or whatever. Oh, you mean like my mother claims to be? Well, no. Just because you quit drinking don't mean you're not going to be an asshole. <laughs> no. The problem is she claims she's recovering, but uh, what about them uh, boxes of wine in the back of your closet there, Geraldine? Oh, damn. I forgot right. about those. That's wonderful. I don't even know where this came from the equation. <laughs> I'm just being funny. I'm just in a weird mood. Don't mind me, everybody. She just wants to talk up a storm tonight. That's good, though. Mm-hmm. That's good radio. Um, But, I mean, it's just fucking... It's just crazy. Uh, You know, I wish they had more things like Alateen. Alateen really... Helped you out. Uh, basically, what it does, I'm not going to say any of the stories that were on there because those are confidential. Yeah, no, you can't. Okay. But what I can say is that it really shows a, a child or actually a teenager. Yeah. Based on hearing other people's stories that, you know, you're not the only one with a shitty life. Right. Your you life's know, not just as, you know, your life might not, might not be as, your might, life might not be as fucked up as the person over there or the person over there. You might realize that life isn't as bad as you, you know, seem to think it is. Or, you know, it kind of helps you get through your shitty life if you've got a really shitty life. But I'm sure all the programs to help people uh, have been cut down due to the fucking deficit or some shit. Probably. But, I mean, uh, the whole thing is... 
when you come from a dysfunctional fucking home mm-hmm. and you don't know who you can trust because you, I could not go to my parents with things. I could not go to my parents with things. I love watching the TV shows and the movies and everything that are honky dory. That's like, okay, uh, if you have a problem, come to us. Come to us? No. If I came to my parents with a fucking problem, you know what would happen? I'd get bitched at. Yep. And I'd be called a fucking liar. You know, because my stepfather had this fucking thing. Not to fucking stay on this kick. But he had these fucking questions that there was no right fucking answer. Oh, it was, yeah. It was like a setup. It was like a police setup and shit. You know how a cop says, yeah, I'll cut your break. And then you... You know, you just give me this little bit of information. Yeah, and then I've known people that have given that fucking information. I didn't. I don't. I, I, I'm not hearing it. I, I know it's bullshit. Yeah. But th- I've known people that have given that information and then get ended up in more fucking trouble. Exactly. They didn't shit. Kind of like when we watch the repo shows and they're like, yeah, just put this paper over here. And if, when they're doing that, they drive off. You know, well, no, they'll say they'll say, oh, yeah. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Um, they'll say, just come over here and sign this paper and we'll put your car down. And the minute the person starts walking over towards the person holding the clipboard, they t- book off with the car. Oh, yeah. And the other person, whoever was holding the clipboard, runs and jumps in their truck or jumps in the tow truck or whatever and takes off. I- I- exactly. Lizard Lake's famous for that one. <laughs> I- I- exactly. So, um, but my point being... Is he would ask these fucking questions. There was no right answer. It was a setup. If you said one thing, you were wrong. If you said the other thing, you're a fucking liar. Yep. He'd say, well, if you say this question and you answer it this way. So, well, why didn't you say it that way? Right? Like if you said, okay, Ray, th- th- what color is this? It- this is blue, dad. Well, why didn't you say it was red? Because it's blue. But I wanted you to say it was red. Am I right? If for instance, something like that. <laughs> uh, for instance, if a fucking okay, if there was a party going on, mm-hmm. okay, and there were kids that got in trouble with the party, and somebody mentioned my fucking name, yeah, whether I was there or not there, I was guilty. That's fucked up. And I was at many parties. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. I know. But if I was not at the party, I was wrong because I'm a fucking liar because I was at the party. Right. And you could have 20 kids back you up and he'll still say you're a liar. But he didn't, you know, he didn't swear like that. He, well, no, no, no. My no, mother but, would swear like a sailor. But he would say you're a liar basically still. He'd be like, well, Ray, why can't you be honest with me? That's what he'd tell me. God. But if I said I was at the party, he'd be like, well, Ray, you know I told you not to go. <laughs> so I, I'm like, sometimes I would just not answer. He would ask questions, and then, he, then he'd yell at me for not answering. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, you know, it's just fucking crazy. Yeah, but but the crazy. thing is, he compared me. Because he worked for a dysfunctional kid place. Mm-hmm. He compared to me to the fucking other dysfunctional kids out there. And you can't do that. You cannot compare one kid from a fucking another kid because they're all fucking different. Exactly. They may have similar traits, but they're all fucking different. And you exactly. have to take it by a case-by-case fucking basis. Exactly. He did not. He put everything in one fucking pot and said, okay, yeah, let's see how I can stir it this time. Yep. Trust me, I was grounded from every fucking thing you can imagine for no fucking apparent reason. I was I grounded from it. a youth group. That's fucked I up. had a dude that used to be in a big brother, big sister thing. He was taking me out. They got jealous because I was getting too much freedom. But it was fine if I was out there freezing my ass off. And it was fine if I was freaking burning my ass off. Because I wasn't allowed at a certain time. But if I was out with somebody, oh my, it, end of the world. If I was doing something fun, oh my. Oh my God, he actually got to do something fun. Yeah, exactly. Hunt, we have to put a stop to that. Exactly. That's really how it was. Yep. But, but I mean, 
I had to search other outlets. And I'm not saying when I hung out with, you know, different kind of people, people didn't say, well, hey, you know, why don't you join this or why don't you join that? But I was smart enough to say, I don't need to. Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying hanging out, but I don't need your help. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you, but no thanks. Yeah, that's good. You know, I can fight my own fucking battles. Right. Because, uh, you, you know, when I was, uh, uh, you know, a little boy, I was picked on and all kinds of. Here, here, here's the deal. I don't know if I've said this before, and I'm, you know what? I'm gonna first. We're gonna play some new, brand new shit. It's called Veal by Omega Down, and then we'll come back and I'll tell the reason why I got so many jump so many times, twice. Okay, go ahead. All right. This is Omega Down and Veal. Enjoy. They're a Knoxville based metal band. All right, that was a mega down. Real good band. Out of Knoxville. But anyway, um, we will have them, you know, you know, interview with us and everything. It should be a phenomenal interview. Yeah. But back to where I was and what I was talking about. I did some stupid shit when I was... Younger. But. I I still don't feel it was stupid shit. No, I think what you did mostly was just normal kid things like everybody else. But but here's here's the deal. I moved in, uh, you know, a brand new school when I was in fifth grade. Right. And. 
you know, stayed there throughout my uh, middle school for, I don't know, like two years. Right. Well, most of my middle school. And the thing is, when I originally got there, I didn't have that many. Hold on one second. Let me hold on that thought. You know, but I didn't have that many fucking friends when I first, you know, moved there. Right. So here I am, you know, in in a new school, in a new environment. And I said, well, what is the one thing I can do to, you know, show these people I'm a cool person? Right. You know, so I was over my cousin's house, actually. And when I was over my cousin's house, my uncle, you know, Anthony, Mm -hmm. uh, my father's side, his brother. Okay. You know, he owned a baseball card shop. Right. And he said, well, hey, I've got all these cards here. If you know anyone that wants cards, hey, you know, here's my number. You know, get the order and, you know, I'll do it. Not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I told the kids at, you know, the school that, uh, you know, that I had all these, you know, that I can get this card, I can get this card, I can get this card. And you know how kids are when it comes to cards. Yeah. Especially boys. Yeah, when it comes to their baseball cards and football and stuff. You know, and kids actually had the money. Mm-hmm. And gave me the money for these cards. Right. Now, what they're doing, they're expecting, you know, the cards. Or there's going to be an issue. Here's what happened. I go home. I go to call my uncle and say, hey, I got this order like you told me to. My my stepfather stops me in my tracks and says, no, Ray, I didn't say you can do that. You need to return the money to all these kids and you, you're not going to get shit. I said, okay. So I went back to school. I explained the situation. I gave them back their money. You know what? I kept on getting my ass whooped. I kept on getting jumped because I was known as a fucking liar and everything else under the sun because they didn't get their baseball cards and they were pissed and they didn't want their fucking money back. Right. I mean, I gave them back their money, but they didn't want the money. They wanted what they want. Right. You know, so in my eyes, I wasn't wrong. Right, yeah. And I'm going to talk about that other thing in a minute, but I don't want to ignore that the uh, we've got some chats going on. I'm just seeing it right now. Okay, well, let, let, let let's me see what the, let, let see me what see say. what the audience is saying here. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Angela Truth, for uh, you know listening to the show. We appreciate it. Oh, that's and good. And we are in Knoxville. And uh, you, you're right; things could be expunged. We were not ignoring you. I just noticed the chat a minute ago. Sorry about that. <laughs> but anyway, back to what I was saying. The second one. You know, came as a, okay, well, I'm tired of, you know, having to watch my back every fucking say This is ridiculous. Over yeah. absolutely nothing, you know? Exactly. In my opinion. So, uh, I, I, I got the BMG, or Columbia House, one of the fucking Yeah, shows. Columbia House, I think you said. Well, whatever. You know, I got flyers in the mail. You know, a, a 10 for a penny, this, that, and the other. And then I had a big old fucking booklet I found. So I took the things not in the flyer, but in the booklet. And just started, as a joke, started writing things down. Like yeah, box sets for this. Just to see what they would and do. That. Right? So anyway, I received a letter that I'm getting this, 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 I'm getting this. You know? And, okay, so I, you know, went in school, and I put in put in the order and told the kids, all right, I've got the, 
you know, uh, this box set. I've got a kids box set. I've got a fucking Garth Brooks box set. I got this. I got this. You want? Just give me the money and we're all set. Yeah. I had a great place. I was going to hide it and everything. Here's the fucking problem. I had it delivered to the actual apartment building. Right? Mm-hmm. I had it delivered to the fucking apartment building. And then not only was it delivered to the fucking apartment building, you know, it was just the apartment. No, it wasn't the, it wasn't the, you know, the actual address. The address. Yeah. The reason I got the letter was because, you know, the, the mailman's like, well, I got this thing. It's from uh, BMG. I don't know who it goes to. And I said, all right, yeah, I'll take it. I'll find out who it goes to. Yeah. You know? So anyway, here I am. I know that it's going to be coming in the afternoon. I get the money. People fund me the money up front. Yeah. They said, this time, Ray, you better not be fucking lying. All right. So I go to wait for the fucking mail person. I'm in the hallway. Mail person comes. You know, I hide. Drops it right in the hallway because I don't know where it's going. So it just drops a bunch of fucking packages in the hallway. Yeah. I grab the fucking package. I go in the house. My stepfather happens to be coming out the door at the same time. Oh, shit. And he's like, where'd you get this from? And I'm like trying to come up with some bullshit story and everything else. And he's like, well, you know, this is mail fraud and you can go to jail for this. So you're going to return this and you're going to give every. And I'm like, yeah, but I got people that paid for it. But you're going to return this right now and you're going to give everybody back their money. It's like, you know what happened last time I did that? You know, and it was just. So here I am. Give back the money. Prepare for everybody to be mad at me again. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. Yep. And the second time I was wrong because that is wrong. Yeah. But the first time I was not wrong. So. But I learned, you know, there's certain things you can do in life and certain things you can't. So. Exactly. So while I'm answering this chat, because we got another chat here, you why don't you share a story on some fucked up things in your life? Some fucked up things. Oh, let's see. I don't know. I mean, other than... Growing up a normal kid, I mean, you know, gotten a normal kid shit, you know, normal things. I basically was told by my mother all the time that I was a liar, no matter what I was saying. She was kind of like his father. She'd give you questions that there were no answers to. And when you didn't answer, she'd say the same thing like his stuff. Well, why didn't you answer me? But Ma, but I said, shut up. Stop talking. I'm not talking to you. Cut the shit. But, Ma, you just asked me to t- shut up, I said. So, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in, like I said, in my household, except for my mother being a mother of all mothers. I don't know. <laughs> However you want to put it. But, yeah. It's crazy. I mean, you know, life goes on. What did the person have to say, baby? Just wanted to say that, you know, just listening and Oh, awesome. That, that's that's well, cool as hell. Thank you for so. listening. We're glad you're listening. So, I mean, it, it's just crazy, though. Life sometimes is just one It big- is crazy, especially when you grow up. And like I said, when you're a kid, no matter what you do, your mother or father tells you you're lying. Even when you tell them the dead, the God's honest truth. And then you're not even old enough to have sex yet. And you're being called a whore by your mother. Yeah, okay, ma. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's some crazy shit. Now, if I was called a whore, that would be cool, though. <laughs> be- because that was, you know, that was a guy. I'm not getting into them <laughs> that's stories. That's being a guy thing, yeah. Being a guy thing, yeah. I'm but not when go- you're a female and you're not even old enough to have... Sorry. You're not even old enough to have sex. Nor do you even know what it is at that time. Because you're still too young. It's kind of fucked up, you know? Uh, very or you're true. getting called a bitch. You're like, I'm a what? <laughs> you're a bitch and you're a liar. Yeah, okay, ma. Yep. Mm, sure. But, you know, just in general, I mean, people come from, like like I said before, people come from dysfunctional families. It, yeah. It's fucked up nowadays. Uh, there was a time where you could trust anybody in your family. 
nowadays it seems like your cousin's gonna stab you in the back. Your um, your brother's gonna stab you in the back. Your sister's gonna stab you in the back. Your mother's gonna fucking you know talk shit about you. It's just like it's just fucked up. It's just really fucked up. That's not the. That's not the way that we were, you know. We're that originally we, raised. Well, I mean, that's not what we were told. Nope. I, I'm, but I'm, I'm sorry, but. I'm sorry growing up, but I didn't trust my mother or my own brothers. Maybe I'm. Was, I still don't. Maybe I was too much of a movie buff. Maybe I've seen too many families that were. Hunky dory, perfect. Hunky dory and perfect. and Like full house in that. You know, maybe I heard too many stories from friends how they, you know, had family outings and everything. Our family, I'll tell you about our family outings. Our family outing, we had a few. Mm-hmm. And my aunt, you know, you know, God bless her soul because she just tries everything, you know, to get everybody to get yeah, along. she's the most wonderful person in the whole world. But it's not happening. It, 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 it was not fucking happening. My uncle's. Did not like each other. Did not. I can't. And by the time that they got there, I'm sure they were drunk. They who were all was drunk. drunk. Who was beating each other up? Who was yelling at each other? I could just imagine. Just knowing your family. <laughs> and I'm just guessing. I didn't know you back then. They would ma- literally make shit up. Just to fight. They, they did I not like it. each other. I believe it. I've heard some of the shit that goes on in the family. You, you know, uh, and what was fucked up, even the holidays were worse. You know, I'm not going to get into the, you know, family, not today. But oh. what, what was fucked up was even the holidays were worse. There was no such thing as a fucking peaceful holiday. No such thing in my family. No. Not at all. Uh, it didn't matter what holiday it was. Uh, people would end up arguing for no fucking apparent reason for little shit. Just, just little shit. Well, I think, I think, um, most of our holidays weren't too, too bad. But usually, I think my mother and my aunt would usually end up arguing because my mother would say something fucked up to my aunt, hurt my aunt's feelings, or my aunt would say something, and my mother would take it out of context and, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, they would just have argument, a little argument. But I think the worst holiday I could ever remember was. My mother was fighting with my aunt's... My aunt's mother said something. And my mother took it out of context. And she got mad at my aunt's mother. And my aunt started fighting with my mother. And I went to stick up for my mother. And we all ended up arguing. It was a big clusterfuck. But it still ended up being a holiday that we still remember and enjoy. But I think my best memory growing up, though, was what my aunt called Vony Night. Which was Sunday night. Or Sunday afternoon, we go to my aunt's house for macaroni and sauce. And that was my favorite night of the week. Because I love my aunt's sauce. So, that was my favorite. And then going to my, you know, my, my father's family always had, you know, you know, their little outings like Father's Day picnics and stuff. And, of course, you know, aunt would be fighting with this aunt or that aunt would be fighting with that aunt or this person's mad at that person, that person. It's crazy. So, I mean, I guess we all have our little, uh, you know, dysfunctional families. You know what I'm saying, hon? Yeah, but uh, they weren't like mine. No, they weren't that. They weren't really that dysfunctional. My family was diff- no different than any other f- normal family. We were basically just a normal family. But we're Italian, so on my dad's side. So, you know, we all have our, you know, our 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 thing that we want to say or, you know, something. So, you know, it just happens, but, you know, like I said, I love my aunts and uncles anyways you... on my dad's side. All right. Well, on that, on that, uh, on that note, we're going to, what are we going to do? Let's see here. I don't know. What are we going to do? Oh, yeah. I wanted to say this. Um, We were originally going to have uh, my buddy, you know, Dahmer. He's a, a Navy recruiter on, you know, doing an interview tonight. Yes, he's a fantastic but guy. He said that other he had ob- obligations he had to attend to, and y- you know how it is. If they say you got to do something else, you got to do something they else. You got to do something else. What are you going to do, you know? You know, so there's, you know, no telling. However, he will be on uh, next week. 
Oh, good. I'm Netflix excited. I can't will, uh, wait. Be on. And what he does is phenomenal. You know, the fact that he, you know, recruits all these, uh, you know, kids and, you know, gives them a chance because a lot of them, you know, maybe from the streets or, you know, maybe from dysfunctional homes. Families, just, yep. Uh, gives just them give a way him to some straighten kind out. Of, yeah, just give him some kind of guidance. And, you know, he's honest with people. He tells them, but, hey, hey. I mean, people. either people are cut out to do this or they're not. Exactly. It's not for everybody. I mean, you know, I give that's why I give a lot of credit to all our, you know, men and women that fight for our country, you know, because uh, not everybody can do what they do. And also, we were supposed to have Megan Odom. And what happened with uh, her? She uh, she got she ended up she was sick. She wasn't feeling well. So she said she's going to be on next week as well. Oh, awesome. I'm great. So uh, uh, we really hope she feels better and everything. Yeah, feel but better, Megan. In the meantime, we're going to play some. Uh, we sh- we're going to play You Should Have Known by Megan Odom. Oh, good. Uh, she's a Knoxville R&B uh, slash uh, rapper. Slash, she just got a, w- a very unique style. Oh, wow. I was about to say weird, but I didn't want her to take it the wrong no, way. No, it he doesn't like mean that. it that way. He just means you have your own style. All right. And, um, you know, Miss Truth, if you're still on there, uh, I'm going to, you know, text you back something. Just give me a minute here. That was uh, Megan Odom. Yep. Phenomenal artist. Very talented, you know, from Knoxville. She is very talented. Um. Okay. Um. We were speaking with uh, on chat Angela Truth. She does her own podcast and whatnot. And we welcome you to uh, do a show with us. Um. 
you oh. know, through our call-in system that we have, we've been just using for uh, interviews. Yeah, we'd love to have you on and, you know, hear your views on some stuff and, you know, just come in to chat, you know, and be cool to chat with you. If you're still listening, either, you know, add us on Facebook. Well, evidently you are on, um, you know, Twitter. So right. You, so you sent a retweet and everything, Um, you know, because we're not ignoring you. We don't ignore anyone. No, we don't. We've never ignored anybody. But at the same time, we don't want to interrupt the show and be like, okay, like 40 seconds of silence and shit. Right. You know, we, we try to get back to each and every person. Sometimes we don't get to get back to them right away. But, you know, we'll get there when we... But if, but if you'd like to set something up, give us a call. 865-268-5773. What is it? 865-268-5773. And that's our uh, admin line or, um, you know, get a hold of me on Twitter or whatever. We'll set something up where we can do uh, like like a little, you know, uh, we we could all talk together and, you know, discuss shit or whatever. Exactly. And we we'll do a little interview on you because you, you're pretty popular on here and we, we like to help people out at the same time. Of course. Anyway, you know, the thing is. Is this, when you come from a dysfunctional home, you can kind of understand where the world is going. Right. Because a lot of people nowadays are just getting tech savvy and just doing everything online, especially the new generation. Very true. And we've talked about this before, that kids rather text each other right next to each other than have a conversation. It's sad, but it's true. Um... So it kind of, it doesn't surprise me when shit gets fucked up. It doesn't surprise me when the wrong people are running shit. Exactly. Very true. Because the right people to run shit are are just sidetracked. They're just given all these different devices and all these different things to say, hey, okay, well... All right. Um, you're doing it. You're fucking. Uh, yeah, do it this way, and this is the right way. It's totally the wrong way. Exactly. It is totally the wrong way. But you know, every, all these things. To, it's so easy how people give us things to entice our life with. Yeah, they do. I mean, they, to make things supposedly easier for us, the easier way is making us more lazy. That's what it's doing. Well, it, it just makes us, you know. Tr- it, you know, not be transparent to the truth out there. Like I said, and also make us lazy because as we talked before about kids who uh, decide that they'd rather text each other than talk to each other face to face. That's why there's so many bullying and so many, you know, fucked up things because kids don't know how to deal with each other anymore. And it's just not it's just not the kids. I mean, it. These kids are growing to adults and don't know how to handle because everybody's screwing them. You know, that's just a fact of it. That's why it's one big clusterfuck. Everybody's getting screwed. People go to college, think, okay, yeah, I'm going to come out and get this great job and then get fucked. That's very true. That's very, very true. Unfortunately, I hate to say it. Uh, You know, they go to this trade school, promise the world, and then get fucked. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, both my, you know, all actually, I think, I believe all three of my brothers have gone to college, and of the three brothers, I think, well, I don't know if my younger brother went in his field or not, but I'm pretty sure I think he did. He's actually a bank teller, and he's actually doing very well for himself. I mean, not that my other two brothers aren't, but I don't think they're they're doing the jobs that they went to school for originally. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I know, I know people that graduated in automotive, a fucking master fucking mechanic, and changing fucking tires. I believe it. I mean, I mean, I can go on and on about fucking stories that are fucked I mean, up. Like I said, all three of my brothers all went to school. I mean, I went to school for an extended period of time, and I don't think any of I don't think any of them. I don't even know if my younger brother's even in the field he took in school, because I don't remember what he went to school for. But yeah, he's a bank teller. My other brother works for a um, company that ships. Last I knew, uh, like a Harvey's in, Harvey Industries type thing. 
they're not even. I don't think they're even around anymore. I don't even know if they are. But the point being, it's like set up. Who, who's going to be here? here who's who's going to be, be there? Yep. And it's just one big fucking setup. Exactly. It's like it's predetermined who's going to be here. And if you're not in that predetermined list, you're fucked. Basically, yeah. We're not going to help you in any way, shape, or form, and we're going to make your you fucking life climb absolutely that miserable. Real slow. And when just as you think you're going to get up a little bit, guess what? Oops, you slipped. Back down you go. You went up four rungs. Guess what? You just went down three rungs. So now you're back at the bottom trying to work your way up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, life, that's how it is. Yeah, you go, uh, you go to apply for a business loan and. And then somebody doesn't like that and pulls up a record of fucking 15 million years ago. Oh, well, you did this in this time. No, no, you owe this bill from the, you owe this major bill and it, it brought up interest. And now you have to pay this before we'll give you a loan. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. And you want me to get this money from where? Out my ass? Oh, good. Sure. Just let me do it. Hold on one minute. And I mean, it just seems harder. It seems like any fucking real job is just like harder and fucking harder to fucking get the job. It's exactly. like you got to go through loops and fucking boundaries. How many, you know, how many hoops can you jump through? Yeah, before you can actually get a job. It's like, okay, yeah, this person's good. Okay, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to make them do a background check. Oh, yeah. Not only are they going to do a background check, and that's perfectly fine. We're then going to have them do three fucking interviews. Because on one interview is not enough to determine if they want the fucking person. And then the second job is, uh, I mean, the second uh, interview is, oh, well, we found this little flaw from 50 billion years ago. So we got to do one more interview with these people. You know, you have to go through fucking three interviews, and then you got a drug test, which fucking, okay, yeah, you got a drug test, you got a criminal background test, you got to go through fucking three fucking interviews. And then after the three interviews and your drug test and all that, and they, then, take your, they take your, uh, your, your, what is it, your, uh, what the hell am I trying to think of? Okay, will you let me speak? I was starting to say something, let me finish, because you messed me up now. Are you... Okay, then they take your paper that you filled out for your for your job and they throw it on a pile of about a billion other people that have already been through these three interviews and these drug tests and everything else and sit there for God knows how long. But now people are, you know, this is what's pissing me off. Okay, you, you got it. You're going to throw me through a background check. You're mm -hmm. going to throw me through three interviews. You're going to throw me through a drug test. That's fine. But now you're going to do a credit check as well? Really? What about those people out there that fucking helped out somebody and, and got fucked over? True, exactly. Not only that, but what does my credit have to do with my work history and how I work? What, because I have a little financial problem? Oh, well, you might, you might rob from us because you have financial problems. Uh, uh, no, not necessarily. And what's funny... Is prior to this year, medical bills did not count. Yep. But now with this new fucking tax, I'm sure they're put a part of the equation as well. I'm sure. So, so now the medical, you know, that you went for surgery like fucking 10 years ago is now, okay, your credit score was 800. Now it's fucking 580. Exactly. Because you didn't pay a medical bill 300 million fucking years ago. Oh, boy. I mean, I mean it's just getting fucking crazy. It, but like I said, nothing fucking surprises me. Me either. There's so many fucking chemicals on... You know, they talk about the chemicals in the cigarettes. Right. But then you got chemicals in food. Yep. You got chemicals in the air. Yep. You, I mean, There's it, chemicals in everything. It's like every product. Yep. And then when they make the fucking product now, it's garbage. Remember back in the day when you were a kid and you bought a fucking toy? How fucking sturdy that fucking toy was and how it was fucking indestructible unless you had a crazy motherfucker like me as a kid who just would break shit just for the hell of it? 
Oh, yeah. Now this shit's all plastic. Oh, yeah. I used to take my... When I was little, I used to take my dolls and I used to play rough with them. But then not only that, but my brother would play rough with them. He, you know, he'd throw them on the ground and, you know, beat the hell out of them and everything else. And they wouldn't break. But nowadays, if they did that, nah, they would have broke. But what's funny is not only did they make the shit cheaper, not only do they make the shit cheaper. Yep. They make it more expensive. It's way more fucking expensive. Everything, but it's everything. Wait, remember when fucking diapers were fucking dirt cheap? Now they're like fucking. You gotta go rob a bank to get a freaking thing of diapers. I know, really. Come on. And we're not condoning robbing a bank. No, we're not. But we're just saying it's so damn expensive. You practically got to take another loan out on your house just to be able to afford diapers for your baby. And formula, formulas through the fucking. I remember Oops, when yep. it was a fucking a dollar. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, formula I now is through the fucking roof. Absolutely through the roof, and pe- and the thing is, they think, okay, yeah, well, we're gonna hire minimum wage. That's wonderful. You hire minimum wage, but you hire every other fucking thing too, so but it didn't you know do what? shit. They're making shit so expensive. That's why they're having to lock up the formula now because people are actually stealing it. I don't blame them. I mean, it's fucking crazy. I'm not condoning stealing, but I don't blame them. I mean, thankfully, when my son was a baby. Um, formula wasn't as expensive as it is now. Oh, it's ridiculous now. It's, it's I wouldn't know what the hell I would do. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. That's why everybody's on WIC. Because WIC is basically what helps the mothers with their formula. If you can't get on WIC, then guess what? You're basically fucked. Oh, they're eventually going to cut that out, too. Oh, yeah. It, it's going to be a... Uh, they'll make up some fucking kind of rule. Oh, yeah. Anything that helps, like, the normal, everyday person, they'll cut out. Yeah. And they don't give two shits. I mean, that's They'll just... be like, oh, you have to pass a drug test. You have to do this. You have to do that. God only knows. Yeah, I think they're doing something like that with, like, food stamps now or something. Some hey, I don't thing. give a shit because you know what? We don't have to deal with that, but still. Exactly. For the people that do. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it's just fucking crazy. It's just fucking crazy how the fucking world is turning. You know, and I hate saying things like this because... Back, you know, when we were kids, our parents would say the exact same thing, and, and their friends would say the same thing, that the world's getting worse than everything, but if yep. you're not seeing it now, then you well, you, know you must be blind. When you're a kid, you're so innocent to life and to everything that you don't even realize what's going on around you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're so innocent to the world that you don't see all the things that were going on that were fucked up. But now that we're older and we're looking through adult eyes and not through little kids' eyes, we see it more and more. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll tell you one thing. That whole fucking drone thing, I don't like it. No. I don't like it at all. I don't want them... I don't want robots, you know, dropping all packages. I don't want robots anywhere fucking near me. I don't want robots in the sky. I don't want any kind of machinery that can impact my life and at any point could, you know... Throw a gun at me. Exactly. Or whatever else. I don't want it. Exactly. You never know. I mean, you never know what these robots could do. You know, so... I mean, you know what? They fall the wrong way and they malfunction and, you know, God knows what the fuck happened. Could happen. Yeah, it, it, it's just fucked up. It is. It, you know, shit is just fucked up. Major fucked up. See, see this thing I don't buy. I don't get if we're so fucking far in debt. Oh, this is what I wanted to say. How the fuck can we afford drones to deliver our packages if we're so far in debt? We could afford drones. We could put fucking millions of dollars on fucking unnecessary fucking technology. Unnecessary you know, uh, experiments are necessary. Exactly. This, are necessary that, but yet we're in de- it doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't. Something does not fucking add up. Last time I checked, one plus one is fucking two. Not four. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, not three. Exactly. I, I mean, it's just every day I hear I hear stupid. You know, I hear crazy, just crazy stories. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It gets stupider and stupider by the day. The stuff that we hear, you know? I mean, it's just stupid. Every day, 
You hear something stupid or some fucking somebody doing something crazy. The fuck's going on with life? People are just fucked up. I don't know. And and here's the thing: it's not just us in debt. Everybody's in debt. Every, oh yeah, every, every country, country owes every other fucking country. I was watching this YouTube thing, and it was saying, "Okay, well, how is this country going to pay back this country when they're borrowing from this country? Yet this country over here is borrowing from this country. Yep. So every fucking country is in fucking debt. Exactly. It, it was just funny as hell." It's not. It's serious, but it's it was just funny as hell. Of course, it is. It's crazy. So I mean, it, it's just fucking just life in general. Just doesn't make fucking sense. Uh huh. I agree with you on that one. And I don't know <laughs> where you're going because Christy's giving the whole thing. Okay, is the show over yet? No, I'm not. I'm just sitting here like, okay, um, he's crazy. I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you know, no one ever accused me of being sane. Me either, so I guess that makes two of us. So, anyway, we're going to play a song, and then we're going to talk about something else, or we're going to wrap shit up. Oh, we haven't decided yet. We're going to do one of the fucking two. Uh, we're going to play I'm a Miracle by Brad Austin. Once again, he will be at the Market Square Arts Fair at 6 p.m. and at 8 p.m. at the Preservation Pub. All right, here is Brad Austin. Well, in one moment. I am a miracle. Okay. I am a miracle It's proven every day All the things I thought to find me Your love has washed away I am a miracle This child you know so well You reached your hand down through the fill You snatched me out of hell I am a miracle Chains they bound me. There was no other way. I chased the things of this world. I threw my innocence away. Your light flooded in, wiped the tombstones from my eyes, replaced this heart of stone with flesh, and washed it in your blood. I am a miracle. Proving every day All the things I thought to find me Your love has washed away Lord, I am a miracle This child you know so well You reached your hand down through the film Snatched me out of hell And I am heart was vacant Till your spirit gave it life The shame I thought I wore so well Surrender to the light Sweet restoration You pour your blessings out on me You gave this slave a purpose And you finally set him free Oh, I am a miracle All right, that was Brad Austin with I Am a Miracle. 
Uh, well, we're going to do one more song. Okay. And then we're going to get on the next topic here. Because I feel this is something that needs to be said. And I feel that somebody needs to say it. And I feel like I want to be the one to say it. And you can roll at me uh, all your, your eyes at me all fucking night, but it doesn't fucking matter because I'm not ready to call it quits yet. <laughs> but here is uh, Absalon, What Have I Done? A phenomenal metal band out of Orlando, Florida. Okay. And if I could fucking play the song. Five minutes to showtime, Mr. Blackheart. You've done well, my son. Leave me alone! What have I done? I was young, not yet a man. Set my sights on bigger things. I had to be strong, and then I learned to play guitar and practice night and day. When the time had finally come I gave my life away Oh, I gave my life away Okay, well, that was a little skit. I think that's cool. But you, that really ties in what I want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, that kind of reminded me of a Motley Crew, a little bit, you know? I mean, that's just what it made me think of or, you know, because it had sort of that... Maybe like an Ozzy Iron Maiden. Ozzy Osbourne, Iron Maiden, and a little bit of, you know, with a little bit of rock thrown in there. Like, that's what it made me think of. But it was cool. I like it. It was neat because, you know, it was different. Okay, but um, to be fair, we will play an actual part of a song from that. Yeah. To be fair. But right now, here's what I want to talk about. I'm going to get serious for a moment, and I'm going to go ape shit. The reason I'm going to go ape shit is because anybody fucking listening or that listens in the future, listen up. I don't care what you've done. We don't. Okay? When you paid your dues, it's over. Exactly. And nobody should be able to rub those um, things you've done in your past in your, you know, into your face. And don't let anybody fucking judge you for based on what happened. Because in life, you know, we're told fucking fairy tales. But in reality... Shit isn't like that. In reality, shit is we fuck up as human beings. We fuck up. You know, we make mistakes. That's it's, what makes us human, you know? That's what makes Who us Who are you real. to judge somebody else for something they do? Well, my mother always said something really smart, and I've always lived by it. Don't judge others. To, till the day you're perfect, you can't judge. Don't judge others. So you know what? I don't. 
That's why I don't judge people because you know what? I'm not perfect and I never will be perfect. So who am I to judge anybody? The point being, which that was, that was cool. But the point being is I don't care what you've done in your past that was negative. It's done. It's over. Anybody at any time can change. Any time, anybody at any time could become a miracle. True, very true. It can be, you know, people need to be respected for who they are. It's easy to put fucking numbers on people and be like, okay, yeah, because you went to jail, you're just a fucking barcode. Right. Because you did something wrong, you're going to be tarnished forever. Well, you did this in grammar school, so you're tarnished forever. Or you did this in middle school, so you're a bad person. I mean, it's stupid, you know? I mean, I'm going back, I'm, I'm being ridiculous, because obviously it wouldn't go that far back. But still, you know what I'm saying? She has no idea where I'm going, but she's, no, but she's still, doing a good job gonna, trying. In other words, how are you going to judge somebody for something they, they did like a million years ago? Today, you know, when they already paid their dues, like you said. Uh, that, that's That's very true. That's very true. But go ahead, honey. You finish what you were saying. Do you notice she's been cutting me off all night? She just wants more, more to be yeah, more involved. more and more and more. Otherwise, he complains I don't talk enough. So anyway. Yeah, and I'm, I'm called a mic hog, so whatever. <laughs> Not by me. I never call my baby mic hog. Here we go again. All right, so. I don't. So anyway, where I'm trying to get. Is that don't shit on yourself because shit has happened in your life. Everything happens for a fucking reason. Reason that we have no fucking clue. But everything that happens... Okay, headset. I I'm glad that you didn't agree with that, but you better go back to where you're at. <laughs> but everything that fucking happens, there's a reason behind it. If you're not with the person that you wanted to be with, well, there's a reason, you know, that you're not there yet. And if you're not at the job you wanted to get, there's a reason why you're not there and you're working the job that you're working. Sometimes you're just not ready. Sometimes physically you could be ready, but mentally you're not there. Sometimes people play fucking cards to keep you down. But this is what I want to say. I want to say, let go of the tattoos within, the scars within. Because it's easy when you're told by your parents or your friends or that you're a failure and you're nothing. You're never going to amount to nothing. You're never going to be nothing. It's easy to fucking say, yeah, they're right. Yeah, I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, I'm, you know, a low life. Yeah, I, I can't do this. Yeah, my life will never be like this. Yeah, I can't get that good job. Yeah, I can't. No, that's bullshit. That's absolute bullshit. fucking yeah. bullshit. You can do anything you put your fucking mind to. I firmly believe that. I do too, and you can rise above it. If somebody tells you, you know what? You're a piece of shit. You can't have that fucking job. That's when you look at them and go, yeah, motherfucker, watch me get that job. And you get that job or you get that whatever, that that degree you want or whatever. You know what? That's when you got to look at people and be like, yeah, fuck you, you little peon. Because I'm going to get where I want to be. And you'll, you'll get there, trust me. But just, just remember, faith. just if you get there, for those that do get there. Don't forget where you came from. Exactly. And don't become the monster just because... You're somewhere else, okay? It's easy when you're bullied to realize, you know, how pain feels. But when you're on top and you become the bully, you are no better than the people that bullied you. Exactly. You know, and in general, you have to let the fucking scars go. You have to let the tattoos go. I am telling you. That you're a good person. 
I don't care where you came from as far as mistakes that you made because that's life. I, I don't care what, uh, what happened in the past because that's life. You are a good person. You rock. You can put anything you you can put your anything you put your mind to, you can accomplish. Like I've said before, if life gives you lemons, you make fucking apple cider. People tell me there's no way to make fucking apple cider from lemons. I say, well, that's because you think inside the box. Sometimes you have to put the instructions down and just fucking let your creativeness flow. You can make anything that does not seem possible, possible if you use your brain deep enough and you figure it out. They say in life we only use 10% of our brain. Well, imagine if what we could do if we had used 20%. Exactly, like our son does on his building games. He doesn't follow instructions to build the stuff he builds. He builds it from just his own creativity. I go on my Sims, which is building, basically, and I build houses just from my creativity. Or I decorate a house just from creativity, you know? It's just how I feel and what my emotions and my, you know, my thoughts are at that point of how I think this house should look or, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Remember they built the fucking agent pyramids according to KRS-1. Right. Okay, who I am a fan of. Okay. I was at his concert in New Haven, Connecticut. I was squashed like a pancake in the front row, the only white kid in the front row, but I didn't give a fuck. I was there. I received a poster, you know, talking about the decoration of hip-hop with, like, all the artists and everything signed. Unfortunately, I don't have it anymore, but I was there. Right. Toad's place. But what he said was that the agent pyramids were built from kids playing. I believe it. Imagine that. If kids playing can build temples that fucking scientists today can't figure out how they were built because they had no fucking machines to build them. Exactly. Yeah, really, how'd they today. get all those heavy-ass stones up on top, really? They I had know. no fucking bulldozer. That's what I'm saying. How the fuck did they do it? That's unbelievable. But if they did that from playing, imagine what we could do if we actually used our fucking mind. The whole mind, if not just If we cleared our fucking mind of all this stupid shit and just realized, okay, I'm going to get my life on track and I'm going to get it done. Exactly. The only thing that is holding us back is ourselves. We can blame it on the government. We can blame it on, you know, the town. Our parents. We can, we can blame, blame it, it on, on our, as you stated, other our parents. Kids that bullied us when we were kids. We can blame it on our teachers. We can blame it on a lot of things. We can blame it on lack of degrees. We can yep. blame it on, we can play the blame game all day and all fucking night. It's not going to get you anywhere. But the bottom line is if you truly believe it and you truly work towards it, you can accomplish whatever you set your goal out. But you have to work hard. You cannot just sit back and just expect life to fucking fall in your lap. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. Rome was not built in a day. That's true. An empire cannot be built in a day. It's just not possible. Or maybe it is possible. Maybe one day somebody will build an empire from scratch in one day. And to that person, I will walk up and shake their hand. Of course. That's if we're alive by then because, you know, that may not be for many, many years. Who, who knows? But the point being is I don't care or we don't care. Well, I really can't speak for other people. But I know for myself, I don't care your backstory. If you were, you know, picked on, if you were, you know, you know, told that you're a fucking loser, you're a nobody, nobody gives a fuck. I believe otherwise. 
case. Right. I believe at any point, I don't give a shit if you just walked out of jail and you just turn on the internet and accidentally hit on this show. Right. I believe anybody at any point in any time can fucking change. I do too. I agree with you. I believe if you give yourself a chance and you stop fucking doubting yourself and just remember this quote. Negativity only shit on me. So unless you like the shit on yourself, stop being fucking negative. Exactly. That's exactly right, honey. You know, and just work hard at what you want to accomplish and you'll get there. Even if you don't make a million dollars, it doesn't matter. Success is not made based on the money you make. It's based on your internal happiness. Your internal happiness will only come when you know you're doing the right fucking thing and following the path that you need to follow. Exactly. Not only that, you have to have belief in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know that you can get there. Just keep, no matter what people say, just keep believing in yourself. Well, you know what? This person over here says I can't do it. Well, you know what? I believe I can do it. And you keep working at it, and eventually you will get where you want to be. And if you don't believe it, well, fake it till you make it. Right. There you go. You know, that's an old saying I learned way back when. Exactly. But, yeah, you have to believe in yourself. You, you have to learn how to love yourself, and you have to learn how to believe in yourself. You can't love others until you love yourself. Exactly. You're never going to be in a relationship, you know, and be truly happy unless you love yourself. I mean, exactly. Because you're never going to find a perfect person. Everybody's got flaws. I mean, if you don't believe it, watch the show Baggage. Exactly. Very true. Very, very true. I mean, you know, that's just how it is. But I believe people need to stand up and say, you know what? I'm a great person. You know what? I'm a kick-ass person. I don't care what I've done. I understand. I paid my dues. Right. And if I paid my dues, who the fuck are you to tell me otherwise? Exactly. Who the fuck are you to say, okay, well, because I did this back in the day that you're going to deny me. Fine. Deny me. I'll find my own fucking way, and I don't need you. Exactly. And you could make it, and you can find your own way. Just believe in yourself. I don't care how old you are. You could be 60 fucking something years old and had a shitty fucking past. Today is a new fucking day. Every day you wake up is a new day, you know? You can change at any point. I don't care if you're a convict and you keep on going back to jail. At any point you can change. It's going to be rough. It is, but you have to learn to believe in yourself and you have to trust that, you know what? Look, I don't need to keep going back to jail. I need to straighten up and do what I got to do, especially if you've got a family out there. What if you've got children out there? And if you keep going back and forth to jail, what are you teaching these kids? Okay, well, it's okay for, for me to go to jail and not to jail. My daddy was or my mommy was. I mean, no offense against anybody that has been, but that's really what morals you're putting into your child's head or to other children. You know what I'm saying, hon? A exactly. It it's crazy... It, it, it's really crazy because when I, you know, I'm not even looking your way because you get upset over every fucking little thing sometimes. When fucking, when I was growing up and, you know, everything, I was told so many times I'm a fucking loser. I was told I wasn't going to, I'm not going to graduate high school. I did through a correspondence school. I'm not going to, you know, I would never, you know, go to trade school, never go to college. Oh, I graduated in computers. Oh, my mother never thought I was going to graduate high school. When I graduated, she was shocked. You know, <laughs> you know, I was a piece of shit. I was a low life and everything else. But I've learned that you can do anything you put your mind to. Exactly. And if life throws you in different directions, take it by the bull and fucking run with it. If you, if you go to school for one thing and come out and do another thing, so fucking be it. Be the best at that fucking craft until you can get back to where you can be. There you go. Because knowledge is key. Knowledge is power. You know, and the more things you know how to do, it's kind of like if you are, you know, you're good enough for the NFL, but you're not going to be the top defender. 
right? So you're going to be one of the mid-rounds or undrafted or whatever. You know, based on, you know, you're just athletically not that good. You're good enough to be there, but compared to the monsters, you're just there. So if you're not good at this one position, well, hey, learn them all. It's, it's better that, you know, you could be at a multiple places and you have multiple fits, you know, where people can place you. Because at least you're still fucking there. Knowledge is key. The more you know, the better you are, the better jobs you'll get, the better things you'll get. And just because you're not doing what you want to do right now doesn't mean you can't do what you want to do tomorrow. Very true. And just because I said that you weren't good enough for the fucking NFL doesn't mean tomorrow you won't prove that you ain't that you're in the fucking NFL okay, are, and you're a are monster. We at church or are we at a uh, what do you call that? A uh, what do you call them groups that uh, that that encourage people? What do they call those, honey? Where did that come from? <laughs> I'm just making a joke. What's going on? I mean, I always tease you. Seminar, that's what it was, the seminar. If we're at the fucking two local seminar, so the fuck what? We're at the two local. I, I just feel there's people out there that, you know, just need to hear this. It's good to fucking encourage people. It's good to fucking help people out. You know, but on that token, we're going to play another song by Absalom. And this is called Nailhead. Enjoy. <laughs>
All right, that was Absalon and Neil Head. They're a, uh, once again, they're a brilliant band out of Orlando, Florida. Metal band, as you can, uh, you know, tell. They got their shit together and, you know, as we hope, you know, they another great band, you know, they get signed. But, you know, the point I was trying to make before was not a, you know, not the priest, not a sermon. I know you were just joking around and everything. You know, it, just an encouragement to people. Sometimes people just need it. Sometimes. No, there's nothing wrong with that. That's good that we encourage people. We just want people to know on two local, it's, you can feel at home. We've been there. I am not an angel. Not by any means. So, you know, it, it, it's just crazy. It, it, life's just crazy sometimes. You just never know what to expect. And you just never know what's going to, you know, happen next. And just things just get crazy. But on that note, I think it's time to hit the road. This is Ray Ray. This is Chrissy D. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. See you tomorrow night. God bless. Peace.